Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now, the next time when we meet, which will be on, I think, 14th of January, we will go back in history and we will try to look at how this technology first came into being and then subsequently how it went ahead further. I also want to <coughs> inform you about uh, the first assignment that we will be looking at in this course. I uh, will answer it next time because it is to do with uh, what we cover in the next lecture. <coughs> At this point, I think we can take some questions or doubts that you may have regarding uh, the modern aerostat or airships based on what you saw or if anything else you have in mind. We can take these questions. Yes, please mention your name as you before you speak. Yeah. Three side, okay. So, uh, my question is, what is the basic construction difference between a manned airship and an aerostat? There is no difference, except a manned airship normally is designed with higher factor of safety for every structural component, and in manned airships, use of hydrogen as a lifting gas is not permitted by law. To the best of my information, that is the only difference between a manned airship and an unmanned system. So, can I say that a manned airship with some tethering can be used as an airship? Yes, there have been examples of some hybrid systems in which uh, people have used uh, a manned airship with a tether. Oh, yeah, so now whether you will call it as a tethered airship or a man carrying aerostat, that is up to you. But yes, but what kind of application do you have in mind for a manned aerostat? No, I just thought about a uh, very high surveillance, very long time duration. Hmm. Uh, we say the endurance for a manned airship is around what, two hours, sorry, 48 hours. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was just thinking what is the construction difference, no application. Okay. Uh, let me correct you. The 48 hours endurance is for a manned airship. Yeah. For an aerostat, the endurance could be even six months, just a, a function of how much gas tight the envelope can be made and over how much period of time the gas will leak out sufficiently to that the buoyancy is completely lost and she starts coming down or loses height so much that it becomes ineffective. Okay. So, you are, you are talking of an application where you have a tether and then you have an airship. So, it will move around or will it remain stationary? Let's say static. Like hmm. stationary. So, if it remains stationary, then why do you want to put a man on board? What will be the benefit? No, I just wanted to realize any particular construction differences. If no, the differences are only this, that uh, the uh, usage of the LTA gas, there are some constraints as well as uh, because of human being on board and the safety issues, there are higher factor of safety in the design. Anybody else has any question? Yes. Name? Will everybody know you also? Ramya. I know her, of course, but others should also know. Yes, Ramya. Sir, uh, in order to minimize the gas, is, are there any special materials used for that? Oh, yes. Uh, we will yes. We will have a special lecture on uh, materials used for LTS system in which we will discuss what, uh, what is done to ensure that the gas leakage is minimized. So, I will just tell you basically what we do is, uh, there are two approaches. One approach is to use a double chamber envelope. So, you can have like a football, internal bladder will be only for controlling the gas leakage or to hold the gas and the external envelope will be to take care of all the loads and the scrubbings and other weather issues. Or with the modern technology, you can have a single fabric with either laminates or coatings. 
So you can think of a multiple laminate. Let's say two envelopes. One example is Tedlar and Mylar. These are dew point uh, <coughs> patented materials. So many people use Tedlar Mylar laminate. Similarly, what most people do is they go for coatings. So they take a base fabric for strength, they coat inside for gas retention, they coat outside for atmospheric UV protection or ability to withstand the scrubbing and other loads. Okay, so this is what is normally done. Any other question anybody has? Yes. How do I but you have not mentioned your name. Gauri. <laughs> Gauri, okay. How do airships come down? It's a very good question because I have learned that whatever goes up must come down. But uh, in the case of airships, how do they come down? So first question is how do they go up? The mechanism which is used to make them go up, I would say a kind of reverse of that is used to bring them down. For example, you saw in the airship video that uh, the power plant was tilted to give vector thrust. So with vector thrust, we were overcoming gravity to go up. Of course, gravity is overcome by buoyancy, but you want to physically go up, create a imbalance force, upward force, you can do it by tilting the engine. So you can do the reverse to bring it down. That is one way of doing it. But that's a very uh, technologically expensive way of doing things. Of course, airships do have uh, thrust vectoring mechanism. So, can someone help in this? It's a very interesting question and uh, it needs a little bit of thought on how do you bring it down? So like what would you do to bring an airship down? Yeah, name, Vineet. From which department are you? Okay. They can bring you down, they pull you down. Like when, when a boat reaches near the shore, they throw a rope, there is a big pole, they tie around it and then some people pull it. Similarly, you can bring someone, uh, some airship down by physically pulling it down. This is one way of doing it, okay. But then you have to, either you have to fly very near the ground so that there is always a rope hanging below. Suppose you are above that. Let's say you are at 1000 feet. Now you can't, you, you can, you can throw a 1000 feet rope and ask people to pull you down. <laughs> it's difficult. Anything else? Yes, chill me. Uh, yeah, so you could increase the amount of air in the air balloon. It becomes heavy and you can bring it down. This is one way of doing it. You have a small air bag inside the gas bag. So when you have the right amount of air along with the lifting gas inside, such that lift is more than or equal to weight, it will go up. But when you want to make it heavy, you can collect air from atmosphere in that air bag. Okay? So you can have a system which just takes in ambient air. Now this air is heavier than the gas, uh, the gas inside. So the net weight increases. So she will slowly start sinking down. This is one way of doing it. Yes. Ha ah, Pratik, yes. Controlled venting of helium is a way to bring people down, airship down, but very expensive way of doing it because then you are losing, it is like consuming fuel or consuming your gas. Okay. So it is done, but only in emergencies when other things fail and you desperately want to come down. Then venting of helium gas is perhaps the last resort available to you to reduce the lift. Any other way of bringing, bringing an airship down? Yeah, reverse thrust or thrust vectoring, correct. So you create a downward force and you bring it down. Anything else you can do? Yes. So that is what that is what Pratik said, Nutunjay, that you release the gas. Okay. Reduce the volume of the balloon. How do you do that? Have some mechanism which is just keep on rotating and the float will come inside. Okay, so what you are saying is that uh, you will, okay, you will do something so that the envelope volume is reduced. Yes, it can be done. It can be done. This is a very nice innovative way so of doing it. Uh, compartments. Your overall 
Okay, think about it. Now, this is this is something which we have to think about. When we do aerostatics, at that point we will revisit whether you can you have a multi-compartment gas bag, and then you can push gas from say three bags into one bag, and then collapse three bags, so that the volume of the envelope reduces, but the mass of the gas remains the same. Okay, we have to revisit this when we come to the aerostatics. There was something that Omkar was trying to say. Yes. Liquefy the gas. Liquefy the gas inside. Okay, very a very complicated mechanism because the system that you have to carry on board to liquefy the gas will be difficult. I will tell you simpler methods of doing it. Yes, yes. Ah, this is what I was going to say. This is what many people do: collect va water vapor from the atmosphere, condense it. You get water which is very heavy. and that can be but then you have to wait for a situation when there is water vapor if it's in above sahara desert no water in the atmosphere you can't come down we have to wait for rain you can't do that so it is done collection of water vapor in fact what also we do is the exhaust of the engine okay even there there is some water vapor sometimes so there are so we will see that all this will be part of the course any other any other way of bringing it down so why not do the following why not make it heavier than air in the first place so that when you want to bring it down do nothing it will come down okay so what you do is remember that when you are flying at some speed because of the shape it will generate some dynamic lift if you are a clever aerospace designer you will be able to give a shape that gives you very good lift or more lift than drag you know that's what we do we want to have higher l by d lift over drag so if i can carefully shape the envelope in such a way that when it starts moving it starts generating lift let's say let's say 10% 15% of the total lift comes from dynamic lift so you are heavy on the ground the total buoyancy is let us say 1000 and the vehicle weight is 1200 so 200 kg force you create by maybe tilting the engine okay or 220 20, 30 kg force so you start slowly moving up you acquire some speed now the dynamic lift starts coming and then you can relieve the engine and when you fly at some particular speed you might be able to manage comfortably with the dynamic lift plus static lift equal to weight supplement it with the thrust vectoring and when you want to come down just stop flying now this is what we do when we fly our airships our airships are normally heavier than air for this only reason that we want them to come down if things go wrong what do i want i want the airship to come down so although i call them lta vehicles in reality i cheat and fly an hta vehicle so you can call it as a buoyant heavier than air vehicle to be very precise so this is one solution yes so children that uh, reduce the endurance drastically uh, in what way will the endurance come down because you are consuming energy for all the time and in case you have an actual lta vehicle then you can save the energy i mean save the energy for turning the engines on and off for maneuvering true very true but you see uh, one has to do a trade off between what is the total consumption of fuel either either you will have to always fly lighter you fly lighter than air and then have some system which will bring it down forcefully so which of them will consume more power or more fuel we don't know right now so from safety point of view normally airships are flown statically heavy the static heaviness of a typical airship with say 15 passengers is around 500 kg which means there is a 500 kg force acting down always so in, in other words you are offsetting gravity with a 500 kg lag so that if something goes wrong you can slowly come down 
Anything else? Yes. Yeah, so this is this is called a static heaviness. So you can make it around 6 to 10 percent statically heavy. So the extent of buoyant lift will be only 90 or 95 percent. 5 percent you would like to create by aerodynamic forces. You can what we do is in our in our flight we mount the engine at a slight angle. So as she takes off, it's not horizontal flight. It's always giving. So one component of the engine is always giving me that minus that gravitational or downward force. So when the engine stops, comes down. Okay. Anything else, Pratik? You have something? How does it help? You have compressed helium, they have reduced volume. So you have a compressor right on board because you are using a turbine system. Hmm. You have a compressor, like you have two engines, so you have two compressors right next to you. So what if you can route the helium in the balloon to your compressor? This is still running, it is just marginally compressing the helium and you bleed it there. So which means you are going to introduce helium from the balloon into the air stream of the engine. No, instead of that, I would say, why don't you carry small separate systems, which do only this. Because if you mix air and helium, how do you recover only helium from that? You have only helium that you are like bleeding it, right? Uh, so it was said, I think someone told it, but you said it will be very heavy. So I'm just no, what someone said is, what someone said is simply release the helium. No, he said liquefied. Liquefaction. Liquefaction, the, the, what has been attempted is, a small liquefaction system inside the envelope, which when commanded liquefies the gas and pushes in a cylinder. What I am saying is liquefaction requires a lot of compression. What I am saying is my, not, no compression to that extent, but to a certain extent. But you see now the same engine is having an air stream. In that you would introduce a helium stream and that and then the fan will compress it. And then you have to push it back inside the envelope, or where will it go? So it, it can have intermittent thing with. It's, it's very complicated. I know it's. I'm just talking. It is doable. See, whether you have an integrated system or a dedicated system, we decide based on our assessment of the cost, complexity, and weight. It can be done. I mean, things can be done to attempt it. Okay, right. So now, last time I mentioned something on the Moodle page, for the Moodle page, and. One person has responded to that also. Uh, we have got some information about helium now on the Moodle page. I would urge other students to also now proceed further. So the question for you to attempt as at the end of this lecture is find out photographs, videos, description of very innovative uses of airships and aerostats, which will add value to our understanding. Okay. So if you locate something about uh, an application which I have not shown or which you think will really add value or even excitement to our study, please give links of that on the Moodle page. And the second question is, think of other innovative ways people have used for uh, bringing an airship down or the buoyancy control. Okay, on that note, we will stop for the day.